Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to another world. A world of suspense. A world of the unexpected. And a world where fantasy and reality may often wear the same face. We are told the truth shall make you free. However, in certain situations, the truth can send you to jail. And so it's all a matter of what freedom really means, not to mention what truth really means. For Eleanor Hartley, this is no philosophical, theological, or intellectual exercise. It has become suddenly a tangible and terrible fact of life. Our mystery drama, A Tiny Drop of Poison, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Tammy Grimes. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You don't see many people putting salt in their beer nowadays. Not that there's anything wrong with salt on radishes or french fries, but man, not in the king of beers. Truth is, the only thing salt can do for Budweiser is make it salty. An unwise thing to do to the only beer in America that's beechwood aged. Unsalted Budweiser has become the most popular beer in the world. And that's because in brewing Bud, the Budweiser brewmaster goes all the way for a taste, a smoothness, a drinkability you'll find in no other beer at any price. And something else you can take without a grain of salt. The fact that when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Dreaming about becoming richer? Why not wake up richer every day? At Suburban Savings in North Jersey, getting richer is an everyday reality because Suburban has put into effect higher effective returns. Suburban's limited issue 7.50% savings certificate has an annual effective yield of 7.90%. And Suburban guarantees it from 4 to 10 years with a minimum investment of $2,500. You'll sleep a lot more soundly knowing your savings are earning more money at Suburban Savings. So sleep on Suburban's high effective return tonight and come into any of Suburban's convenient offices tomorrow in Bayonne, Edgewater, Elmwood Park, Emerson, Hackettstown, Morris Plains, Nutley, Paramus, and Sparta. Early withdrawal prior to maturity is, according to regulations, subject to a substantial penalty. There's simply no way of knowing. So often, a fateful day will begin quietly, prosaically, with absolutely no hint that the steady pace of the commonplace is destined to quicken or falter. With no intimation that today, a die will irrevocably be cast, and henceforward, our lives will change forever. Or, even cease to exist. A day like this has dawned for Eleanor Hartley. But she doesn't know it yet. Eleanor Hartley, at 32, she has it all. Looks, brains, personality, and a mission in life that seems certain of fulfillment. And on this day, this particular day, Eleanor Hartley is in a recording studio making a very important statement. The principal issue... The primary issue, the overriding, indeed the only issue, is morality. Do you or do you not? Can you or can you not trust your elected representatives? Okay, Eleanor, thanks. We got it. But I haven't finished. That's all we need. Tom, I intend to run my own campaign. Absolutely. Maury, don't edit any of this stuff now. Grab a portable rig and come on with us. We're going to the Madison Beach Club. Just a minute. I have no intention of going to the... You know, we didn't even drink our coffee. Why don't we just relax for a couple of minutes? Mr. Caldwell... I think it's time we reached an understanding. I thought we understood each other all along. You want some sugar? I agreed to run for Congress because a group of concerned citizens asked me. Well, they did. And I thought it would be that simple. 
Why do I have to go to the Madison Beach Club? You want to talk to people? That's where thousands of them are. Also, you look great in a bikini. I think that's dishonest. Why? It's your very own body. Is it your fault that it's more attractive than your opponent's, who happens to be a bald, paunchy old party hack? Oh, why can't politics be simple? <laughs> you know, it's been such a morning. I didn't even get a chance to see the papers. Oh, look, right here. Right here on page one. This is what the game is all about. What? Look, we got some more results from the surveys. You have gone up seven points in the last week. That's not very much. Are you kidding? An unknown running against Big Jim Parkhurst, an entrenched incumbent? The way you're gathering momentum, we are in. Look, Eleanor, uh, I have to know something. What? Big Jim is going to take you seriously from now on. I should hope so. Things may get rough. I'm not afraid. <laughs> you don't know what rough is. You don't know how Parkhurst's people will probe and pry and, and dig. So, if there's anything in your past, anything at all... What are you trying to say? By now, Parkhurst has unleashed the hounds. They'll examine your life from the day you were born. I have nothing to hide. Good. That is... Yeah. No. No one would ever come up with anything to, uh, to embarrass me. The year you were 22? What about that year? Eleanor, we can't account for it. What are you talking about? Well, we've checked you through school, we've checked you through college. You mean, you've actually investigated me? Of course. When you were 23, you married Ted, and the past five years have been an open book. But that whole year, while you were 22... Yes, well... Like so many kids who get out of college, I was at loose ends. Didn't know what I wanted. So, I just took off. I traveled around the country. I was just trying to find myself. And I did. And that's all there was to it. Okay. Come on, finish your coffee and we're off. Hey. What? Look at that. Oh. No, no, it's just nothing. It's just an article here. Which article? Oh, it's got nothing to do with politics. I, I just happen to know this guy. Who? Oh, some guy. He was killed about five years ago. Murdered one night. Nobody knew why or by whom. Well, this sure throws a new light on the case. Turns out he was a foreign agent. Who'd ever thought that Paul Grover could turn out to be a foreign agent? What did agent? you say his name was? A Grover. Paul Grover. Why, did you know him? Uh, uh Grover. Uh, no, I never knew anyone. Go there. figure some people. Um, Tom? Something the matter? I didn't feel good. Good headache. Maybe I better go home. I'll rest for a while. Eleanor, what's the matter? Um, I told you I have a headache. Okay, it's a woman's privilege. Hi there, Congresswoman. Hi there, detective. Get any votes today? A few. You catch any crooks? No. I'm on a whole new thing. Sherlock Ted Hartley, that's me. <laughs> I draw all the weird ones. Uh, this was a guy named Paul Grover. Grover? <laughs> you like this. He was murdered five years ago, buried and forgotten. Now it's suddenly wide open again. You know why? Tom showed it to me in the morning paper. He was a spy. Which means we have to find out who killed him. Isn't it, uh, wasn't it always important to find out? Well, now more than ever. The information we have now is that he was ready to come over to our side and spill what he knew. But, uh, isn't this out of your, uh... The Federals asked us to cooperate. So the old man called me in and said, Ted, go get him. Oh. I'm a victim of my own reputation. So now I have to lone wolf around and try to sniff out a case that's five years old. Ah, let's eat in tonight. Um, okay. It's a rare night. I have you all to myself. Maybe, uh... I, maybe I should never have gone into politics. What are you talking about? Here you are, a cop's wife. You're more than just a cop. And you're more than just a wife. It's one of those crazy things. You're going to go to Congress. I have to be elected first. Oh, baby, you're home free. My career took off the day I married you. 
Oh, come on, Ted. No, I was always a good detective, but in the last five years, you'd be surprised how many ideas I got from you. You really taught me how to think. What do the police know about the murder? Well, just about zero. They figured Grover stopped for a hitchhiker because when he left his office to drive home, he was alone. They found his car at the side of the road, and he was about 30 feet away, stabbed to death. Funny guy. Lived all alone, no friends, just people who knew him casually. I... Well, after all this time, how can you expect to find the killer? Oh, I'll find the killer, whoever he is. <laughs> at least that's what I keep telling myself. I looked at Dad. If he's determined to get the killer of Paul Grover, eventually he will. And I don't know what to do. Should I tell him now? Suppose I did. What would he do about it? But why? Why should I tell him? He can never find out. For all his skill, experience, instinct, he could never find out. No one could find out. It all happened five years ago. And I was someone else, drifting about in another world. How could anyone ever link me to Paul Grover? There were no clues. No one ever saw us together. No one saw it happen. No one. Thanks for picking me up, mister. Um... Grover. Paul Grover. Uh, what are you doing out all alone this time, Ryan? Oh, I, I just feel like walking, moving. You, uh, one of them hippies? What's in the name? I'm uh, talking about names. What's yours? Eleanor. Eleanor what? What does it matter? Okay. How'd you like some supper? <laughs> that would be, uh, welcome. <laughs> I know a nice little place just off the state highway here. You're very kind, Mr. Grover. Very kind. Oh, why are we stopping? Oh, well, I figured uh, before supper we... Uh... We what? Well, let me put it this way. You want your supper, you got to sing for it. Take your arm away. Hey, now listen. Don't you touch me. Who are you kidding? I know you're kind. <laughs> Hey, you come back here. Let go of me. Let go. What are you fighting me for? A girl like you, you don't care, and I'm even willing to pay. Help! Scream Help! all. Scream all you want. Who's going to hear you? Ah. Okay, you ask for this. No, no, please, put that knife away. You quit scratching and slapping. You just behave yourself. You just do as I tell you, and you won't get hurt. I'll, I'll go to the police. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd believe you? Who take your word against mine? I'll say you're trying to frame me. You'll go to jail. Now, oh, come on, honey. Be nice. I'll even give you money. All right. All right. I, I'll, I'll be nice. Don't you try to run away now. I'm holding this knife. Sure. Sure. Well, now you're talking. Uh, drop it. You, you break my arm. That's uh, right. That's the way I was taught. Drop the knife. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Drop it. Uh -huh. uh. Oh, you. I told you. Uh. I told you to drop the knife, but you wouldn't. I, I don't want to die. I... Mr. Grover. Mr. Grover, I'm... I'm sorry, Mr. Grover. But I... What was I supposed to do? You wanted to kill me. What... What was I supposed to do? He was dead. The knife somehow had been turned against his own body. I just stood there. I remember now. I wonder why I didn't panic. But I was cool. I made sure to leave nothing behind me. Not in a car. Not anywhere around. There was no blood on my clothes. And so, I just walked away. I walked away into the night. And no one saw me. 
No one had seen me get into his car. No one saw me kill him. No one saw me leave. Nowhere does any shred or scrap of evidence exist to link Eleanor Daly. Now, Eleanor Hartley to Paul Grover. Well, she certainly told it the way it was. But is it true that there are really no clues? Perhaps there are no fingerprints or bloodstains, but how about other clues? Stronger clues. The clues that exist in the mind, the heart, the conscience. We may find a few of those when I return shortly with Act Two. Great taste in the morning. Kellogg's, Kellogg's has that wholesome taste to get you up and grinning. This is Jerry Crawford for Kellogg's Special K. We've been having some fun in our television and radio commercials by using a ball and chain to symbolize the slight overweight problem common to so many of us. We point out that being a few pounds overweight is just a little more difficult for you. Climbing stairs, just walking around, even sitting down can feel, well, like you're wearing a ball and chain. In case you missed the message, it's this. If you really want to get rid of that extra weight, you really have to work at it by exercising and with sensible meals like the Special K breakfast. A one-ounce bowl of Special K, America's favorite high-protein cereal, four ounces of skim milk, tomato juice, and coffee, less than 240 calories, nutritious, and by the way, delicious. So why not begin each day with a Special K breakfast and then keep up the good work? Special K can't help you lose weight all by itself, but it really is a good start. What's for dinner? Your ShopRite is featuring ShopRite or Shenandoah brand grade A rock Cornish hens. A real family treat at just 47 cents a pound. What's for breakfast? Listen to these ShopRite values. ShopRite grade A large eggs, 59 cents a dozen. ShopRite sliced bacon, one pound package, 79 cents. ShopRite grade A, A butter, one pound brick, 69 cents. Crown top, white bread, 22 ounce loaves, three for one dollar. Save on every meal at ShopRite. She loves the family. She wants the best. She does all that she can do. She lets ShopRite do the rest. Hey, my, what's for dinner? ShopRite has the answer. The Talk of New York, W.O.R., your mystery theater station. They are a most unusual and attractive young couple, Ted and Eleanor Hartley. Ted is a brilliant detective on the city police force. Eleanor is so bright and sincere and articulate that a citizens' committee has asked her to run for Congress. Eleanor is busy with her campaign. Ted is busy trying to track down a murderer. This sounds like two different stories, but actually, it's really one story, because the killer Tom is looking for happens to be Eleanor. No. No, don't. Let me go. Let me go. I'll kill you, Mr. Grover. Kill you. Eleanor, darling. You... Eleanor, darling, oh. wake up. Wake up. Oh. oh. What? Oh. oh. I must have had a nightmare. You were muttering and mumbling the craziest things. I... I think it's just... I've been working too hard. Darling, you don't have to put so much into it. There are lots of people working for you. I want to be elected, Ted. I feel... I feel I could do so much good. Sure. I feel I owe something. You owe something? What? I feel I have a debt. I have to make up for something. What? Oh, well, once I did someone an injury. Who? It was a long time ago. Yeah, but if it bothers you... This person had it coming. <laughs> then forget it. It's not that easy. Want to talk about it? No. Part of our bargain, remember? We'd never press each other for details about what happened before we met each other. Well, I'd say overall it's a good bargain, but... Tell me, did I bother you with this Grover case? Bother me? Yeah, your nightmare. You were mumbling, but... 
You don't want to talk about it. No, uh, no, I'll talk about it if, if, if you want. Uh, I remember reading... It was such a messy murder. I have to find the killer. No matter how long it takes. I'm scared. Because I know Ted means it. He, he never quits. He'll stay with it forever. I don't know what to do. But how can I tell him? How can I confess? It was self-defense, but... It'll be the end. Not just the end of my career. But the end. Between Ted... And me. For my part... I offer you... A dedication to the truth. I will follow the truth. Wherever it may lead. I will seek the truth, whomever it may hurt. What we need in our lives today, at every level, is the truth. The truth. Unvarnished, stark, simple. Thank you. Come on, we have to go. Come on. How did it sound, Tom? Well, sneak down the back stairs. Get you on the south side in 15 minutes. There's a the car. You didn't tell me how it sounded, Tom. Yeah, I know I didn't. What's, what's the matter, Eleanor? The matter? Yeah, with you. The speech. There's something missing. Oh. What? I don't know. Let's say some of the fire was out. Anything wrong? Nothing, Tom. Having a bit of a tiff with Ted? Ted is absolutely in favor of my running. So what's wrong? Why do you insist something's wrong? Your speech. I didn't believe a word of it. Why? Because it was obvious to me that you didn't mean a word of it either. But I... Eleanor, something is wrong. Something has been just a little off-key all week. Now, why don't you tell me about it? Tom, I wish you'd believe me. Everything's... just fine. Yeah? I mean it. Well, if everything's just fine, why are you so pale and why are you perspiring? Uh, Tom. Then there is something. Tom, there's nothing we can talk about. But it's serious. Yes. It's serious. Eleanor, if it should ever come out. It can never come out, Tom. Believe me. Eleanor. Please, Tom. Don't ask me any more questions. Please. Sure, sure. Okay. But whatever it is, I... I'm in your corner. I'll back you. I'll fight for you no matter what you did. <laughs> Even if you committed murder. I can't believe we have a free afternoon. <laughs> Not Ted. You've been busier than I have. Well, that's true. I'm the one who's been doing the neglecting, guilty... I even got you out here on false pretenses. I'm working. Working? Mm hmm. And I said, let's park the car and go for a little walk in the country, but right here is the site. What site? The site of the murder. The Paul Grover murder. Right here, past this tree. Ted, oh. I. Huh? What is it, darling? Something about this place. Well, if you want to leave... No, no, I, uh, after all, if you want me to help you. Right here, past this tree, is where he drove off the road. To, uh, pick up a hitchhiker. No. I don't buy that story anymore. Why not? There was another car. Oh? There were tire marks about 50 feet south of here where another car pulled off the road. But, uh, didn't the police... Know this five years ago? Oh, sure. It was in the report, but the police are like everyone else. We have a considerable body of knowledge, but we only use what seems relevant at the time. You were... Uh, you think there was another car involved? That's right. Someone met him here and killed him. It has to be that way, because he was being set up. <sighs> so, you see, I've got some clues. I have those tire marks. They made a mold five years ago. And I've got this, this little button made of bone. 
It was clutched in Grover's hand. You take a look at it. I looked. It was a little button. A sleeve button. From a corduroy jacket. One of, well, one of the host of buttons that adorned that jacket. The jacket I had worn that night. There were so many buttons. I never even noticed the one that was missing. That jacket. I still have it. I don't wear it often. But I still have it. It's in one of my closets. What you're saying is that if you can find the jacket it came from, you've got your killer. That's right. I've got him. Him? Well... It's from a man's type field jacket, very popular about five years ago, although lots of people wore them. I think you've got one like it back home. Anyhow, there was a fight. Grover was stabbed. The killer took the money. But I didn't... You... I... Didn't what? I didn't know that robbery was the motive. Wasn't it supposed to have been a secret agent thing? I figure a hired killer... But he was stupid enough to pick up some loose bills. That should hang him. Are you sure? You know what else I've got? I found a witness. There's a little restaurant a couple of miles down the state highway. Certainly, I don't mind telling you the story again. <laughs> there was this uh, young man who came in here that night. How can you remember so far back? Oh, Mr. Grover was a steady customer. was a good customer. So I remember what happened the night he died. Yes, he was a good customer, but he put ketchup on everything. Anyway, on that night, this young fellow, he comes in. He's wearing a, a corduroy jacket and denim pants. A uh, why, uh... Why did you notice him? Well, you see, he ordered a steak, and then he pays with a $10 bill, and there's blood on the bill. Blood? Yes, yeah, so I says to him, this looks like blood. He says, does it? And I says, how did blood get on this bill? And he says, maybe it's blood money. He takes his change, gives me a dollar tip, and uh, leaves. Why didn't you tell this to the police? They never asked. Would you believe that this lieutenant here is the first policeman that's walked into my restaurant since it happened five years ago? And can you describe him, Hugo? Oh, I have never forgotten him. He was a big man, six foot tall, about uh, 200 pounds. Uh, he had black hair, brown eyes, a big scar on the left side of his chin, and the tip of his left pinky finger was missing. Thanks, Hugo. Oh, no, sir, yeah, don't mention it, lieutenant. As far as the wife is concerned, uh, madam, if I get up early on election day, I... I might even vote for you. You would? Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe that's why. <laughs> what? Well, you see, you tell the average politician that you're going to vote for him. He shakes your hand. He looks sincere. He says, thank you. You, you look sort of surprised. You say, why? That is honest. It shows you're honest, and <laughs> that's something. <laughs> Hi, Eleanor. Come in, Tom. Got here as soon as I could. Something wrong? Nothing's wrong. Or maybe everything's wrong. Okay, Eleanor, spill it. I don't care what you have to tell me. I don't care how bad it is. Let's get it out of the way. You carry the thing around with you, Tom. You justify it. You say there was no help for it. It wasn't your fault. Why should you pay for it? But it doesn't let you alone. Whether you admit it or not... It keeps building inside of you, and and you feel you just have to tell someone. I understand. Everyone has his own little secret. This isn't a little secret, Tom. Funny, isn't it? Of all the people I know, I feel I can only tell you. <laughs> what about Ted? No. No, I can't tell Ted. Does it concern another man? Yes, but not the way you might think. Okay... We had to come to this point, you and I, Eleanor, because, well, we're going places together. I know. Eleanor, 10, 15 years from now, you could become president of the United States. Oh, Tom. <laughs> oh, Tom. Thank you. Oh, I needed a laugh. Why are you laughing? Sooner or later, we'll have a woman president. Why not you? <laughs> dream on, Tom Caldwell. Dream on. For all of them, it began with a dream. So ask yourself, why not you? <laughs> You'll be 40-ish, even more beautiful than you are now. Wiser, mm. more experienced. Now, what could hold you back? Oh, 
Excuse me. Hello? Darling? Ted, where are you? At police headquarters. I won't be home until late. Can't it wait? No. I have to do it now because I just brought in my prisoner. Who? The killer. You know, the guy that murdered Paul Grover. The man who murdered Grover? Can you be sure? Yeah, I'm sure. We got him cold. Is it possible? Can two people have murdered Paul Grover? We know of one, but who is the other? Can there be another? Maybe it's possible to murder a man twice. We will deal with a number of interesting possibilities when I return shortly with Act Three. Oh, sure. You can talk about good-tasting diet drinks, but I know. I'm Goldilocks, and here at my taste-testing laboratory, I taste-test them all. And nobody's been drinking my diet drinks until I tested sugar-free Diet 7-Up. And then, kabloomy, every bear wanted some. Diet 7-Up is fresh, natural, delicious. Sugar-free Diet 7-Up. This one's just right. Hello, M. Cow. My automatic transmission just got done automaticing. I was wondering, do you silver Chevrolets? Do we service those sensational Chevrolets? Ma'am, Amco has serviced over 3 million automatic transmissions of all kinds. Ah. Nearly 900,000 Chevrolets alone. Ooh. Do we service Chevrolets? George, pitch pipe, please. Chevy Nova and Impala and the Brawler and Camaro and the Chevy too. Oh, my. Yep, we know them. Every Chevrolet automatic make and model on the road today, from the oldest Biscayne to a bright, spanky Caprice. Uh, by the way, what sort of Chevy did you say you had? A Chevy Mustang. Well, no matter. Nobody knows your automatic transmission better than Amco. Double A. MCO. There are over 500 Amco centers coast to coast. Consult your yellow pages for the Amco center near you. Double A. MCO. Amco. Once is usually par for the course, it does appear that some people can be murdered twice. Five years ago, Eleanor Hartley was forced to kill a man in self-defense. And now it develops that the police have evidence against another killer. And Eleanor Hartley, whose horizons are unlimited, now has to make a crucial decision. Everything all right with Ted? Uh, yes. Just fine. They got the killer. Killer? The one who murdered that, uh, Paul Grover. Oh, that's great. Well, Ted is really a great detective. Who's the suspect? I didn't ask. Oh, it'll probably be in the news. Okay, Eleanor, I'm waiting. Tom, I don't want to lose everything. Why should I lose everything? Well, <laughs> you won't lose anything. Don't say that. Is it that bad? Yes. Well, then it'll have to come out. No, it won't. Eleanor, Big Jim is out to get you. He'll stop at nothing. Whatever it is, believe me, sooner or later he'll uncover. No, he can't. No one can. Only I know. Eleanor, there is no way out except the truth. You're wrong, Tom. There's another way out. And it turned up for me tonight. So, the problem is solved. It's settled. It no longer exists. Uh, Eleanor, I... No, Tom. I've pulled myself together. I realize the stakes I'm playing for. It, uh... It simply will not bother me anymore. You say that so easily. It's a matter of alternatives. What will be best for everyone in the long run? Well, I don't know what it is, but I sure hope you can live with it. I've lived with it for five years. I can live with it forever. I'll have to. Ted? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I woke you <laughs> Did you think I could fall asleep? Tell me, tell me everything Who is he? Vince Perry Very bad boy He's had quite a career 
five or six years ago, he was just a punk. Now he was on his way to being number one in narcotics in this town. But uh, you've got him for murder. How did you? Well, after all, five years ago, the police couldn't get anywhere. Well, I had one break. That little restaurant. I guess the detectives never went there last time. It is an out-of-the-way place, but... But why didn't Hugo come for it? Hugo represents a large group of people. Guys like Hugo simply don't volunteer. But all Hugo gave you was the description. It was enough. It told me it was Vince Perry. But the description? Is it enough? Two other things put him on the scene. The tire marks. They're a very special Italian tire. I checked back. I found out that Vince Perry had come into some money, bought an imported custom Italian car. Oh. And the button. I made the rounds of clothing stores all around his neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Found out where he bought most of his clothes. Guy checked back through his records, and sure enough, Vince had bought a corduroy jacket with that type of button. Will all that be enough? The description, the button, the cast, the cops took of the tires five years ago. Plus, well, I shouldn't say that. What? Plus the fact he looks like a killer, has a bad reputation. Well, we don't have to worry about him anymore. Why, uh, why did you say that? Who was worrying about him? Well, I'm sorry, did I no, say something uh, wrong? No, I, uh, um, let me just swallow this. Now, wait a minute, what's with the pills? I need something to help me sleep. But you never took pills before. I've never been under this kind of pressure before. Well, why should you be under pressure? You don't understand politics. I thought the idea was just for you to get up and tell the truth. It's more complicated. Because you make it more complicated. Well, you don't know what a strain I... We're fighting. First himself. Do I have to meet him? He's really a very nice guy. He's a thief. Oh, and uh, this morning I arranged for you to visit Vince Perry. Vince Perry? Yeah, in his cell. Well, why would I... Calm down, calm down. How could you even suggest... Look, look, look at it this way. You have to do me a favor because I have to do Charlie Colligan a favor. Who is Charlie the... Colligan, he'll... Who? Your worthy opponent, Big Jim Parkhurst himself. Do I have to meet him? He's really a very nice guy. He's a thief. Oh, and uh, this morning I arranged for you to visit Vince Perry. Vince Perry? Yeah, in his cell. Why would I... Calm down, calm down. How could you even suggest... Look, look, look at it this way. You have to do me a favor because I have to do Charlie Colligan a favor. Who is Charlie the... Colligan, he'll deliver the vote for you in the fourth ward. This is the kind of politics that I intend to fight. No, my dear, these are the kind of politics that I shield you from. Vince Perry just wants to see you. Why? Well, it'll be a very private meeting. Nobody will even know you were there. Why? Colligan owes him a favor. Do you mean to tell me that if I refuse to see this, this gangster, I can lose the fourth ward? It's not that simple, that open and shut. But elections have been lost by one vote. <sighs> Well, let's get it over with. Well, nice of you to show up, Congresswoman. I haven't been elected yet. Oh, I hear it's in a bag. I only came as a favor to a good friend. <laughs> now, you're getting the hang of politics. That's what it's all about, no? Favorites. I agreed to come to your cell on two conditions. A... It would be kept secret. B, I would do nothing that's foreign to my principles. Okay. Let's find out what your principles are. Let's see if you want to start out by doing the right thing. <laughs> what do you know about the right thing? I know this. The right thing would be for you to confess to the murder of Paul Grover. What did you say? Come on, you know what I said. You know why I said it? You killed Paul Grover. I've seen you do it. That's a lie. Here's the way it was. Now, I get the contract to knock him off. I followed him in my car. I figured I'd bag him after he came out of that restaurant. But first, he stops and picks you up. Then, after a couple of minutes, he stops again. So, I stop. I heard it all. I've seen it all. I let you go. Why not, huh? You did my job for me. And I never forget what you looked like. You can't... You can't prove a word of it. I'm in the spot you were in when he tried to attack you. Now, nobody would have believed you then. Nobody would believe me now. What do you expect me to do? Like I say, the right thing. There's two kinds of people. Honest folks and thieves. Now, there's a law. 
the honest folks obey it, period. The thieves break it. I'm a thief. What are you? <laughs> oh, uh... Eleanor, I, I don't think you two have ever met. I, I'd like to present you to your opponent, uh, Congressman Jim Parkhurst. How do you do? Well, so you're Eleanor Hartley. Well, now I know why I'm going to lose. You're even prettier in person. Uh, I think I'll leave you two to chat. Excuse me. Are you already conceding, Congressman? Oh, sure. Eh, my time's run out. Really? But you're running a very aggressive campaign. Well, you kill a snake, the body can still wiggle. No, dear, I've had it. The voters are wise to me. You know, I always thought you were an ogre, and you are, but a very charming ogre. <laughs> Eleanor, let me give you a word of advice. Advice? Best in the world, because as advice I never followed myself. Now, when I became aware of you for the first time, you broke my heart. How? Huh. I saw you as I was, oh, 30 years ago, filled with spirit, sincerity, a desire to find the truth... And work for it. Really? Yeah, sounds strange coming from me, doesn't it? Well, just remember, it doesn't happen all at once. You wake up one day and, well, yes, you're a crook. You're dishonest. You betray your constituents. Now, you're not really that bad. <laughs> My dear, I'm worse. <laughs> it starts with the first lie, the first deal. That's when you swallow that first tiny drop of poison. Remember that. Have you tasted yours yet? No. Don't answer. <laughs> Just think about it. <clears throat> Thank you, Congressman. Thank you. Well, I, I know you'll have a highly successful career because you're a very honest little lady. You might even become president. <laughs> Good luck. Well, what did you think of Big Jim? Tom, I want to do something. But I need your advice. I want to make a statement. It's something that is true. But it would end my career. Then why make it? Because it's the right thing to do. Ted, what are you typing? How is the big luncheon? Oh, the usual. What are you typing? Yeah, you want to read it? To Chief of Detectives, dear Inspector Summerfield... Please accept my resignation from the police force. Ted, what's this? Oh, I don't know. I just don't want to be a cop any longer. Why? Why? Well, look, you'll be going to Washington. But I thought we... Why do I have to be a cop all my life? Why can't I try something else? Because, Ted, for you there is nothing else. Uh, look, let it go. Ted, I love you. I love you, too. What do you want me to do? About what? You know. How long have you known? How long have I known what? When did you first find out that I killed Paul Grover? The first night I got the assignment. You told me about it in your sleep. You were having a nightmare, but you told me. And every night since then, in your sleep, you kept telling me. The buttons missing from your jacket in the closet. Why didn't you arrest me? How could I? Why should I? Besides, this is the perfect setup for Vince Perry. He's a rat. We're better off without him. Yes. And Paul Grover would have been killed by him an hour later. Why should your life be ruined? It's better this way. We need you more than Vince Perry. And it was self-defense, anyhow. Then why do you want to resign from the force? Because I just made my first deal. I've taken the first drop of poison. Someone, someone else said that to me earlier. I'll stop now before I become the kind of cop I have no use for. Hey, what are you doing? You can't resign, Ted. You're going to make an arrest. No, no, I won't. I can't. You can. You must. I've taken the first drop, too. And I can't live with it, either. Please, Ted. But it'll be the end. No, Ted. It won't. You'll see. 
It'll be the beginning. It was quite an unusual arrest and an unusual confession. An unusual trial and a rather unusual verdict. Not guilty. It would be nice to be able to say that she was elected, but no, there is a limit to the unusual. A pity. I'll be back shortly. Hi, Ms. Goldilocks here. Professionally, taste-testing diet drinks can be very difficult, but I've just had to bear with it. Then I found sugar-free Diet 7-Up. It doesn't taste like other diet drinks. It's fresh, light, natural, delicious. Sugar-free Diet 7-Up tastes so good that I've taste-tested it hundreds of times, and each time I've given it my seal of approval. Yes. This one's just right. Our cast included Tammy Grimes, Paul Hecht, Robert Dryden, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by New Sugar Free Diet 7 Up. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The WOR Mystery Theater was brought to you by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less, and by Suburban Savings with offices throughout North Jersey. The preceding Mystery Theater program was furnished by the CBS Radio Network. Got a second? I'd like to tell you about a new...